ready? Yeah. Okay, so welcome to the Border Sessions interviews. Ooh. Thank you for coming, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, right here we have Rios Kesakai. Dr. R. Uh, uh, Dr. R. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Founder of Mononofu. Yes. Composer, songwriter, producer, engineer, multi platinum selling music. Yes. 10 number one albums produced for artists like Poppy, AK69, Intersection, Chanmina, Misuja, Shiny, Seven. All the way back into 2000, 2005, it's MAP, Crystal K, amongst many oh, others. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We also have Kanata Okajima, um, multi platinum songwriter, top liner, vocal producer, singer, has won Okidon number one over 40 times. It's really impressive. Oh, has yeah, worked with. Yeah, 140, 150. It's almost 150 now. Um, almost 150. Yeah. That's crazy. Has worked with Atarashigako, Hone, Pink Sweats, Nine, Boa, Four Minute, Kepler, NCT, Ili Chill, Shiny, Sonia Shide, Aibu, Le Seraphim, TXT, Twice, and BTS, amongst many others. Gracias. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Last but not least, we have the, the person responsible for all this, Alejandro Herrera, best known as Ale Nois. Artist, composer, producer, businessman, even martial artist. Ooh. Martial. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Signed with Sony Music Publishing, right? Uh, Co-founder of Master Wave Records, has had the opportunity to work with artists such as Kawas, Nicky Jam, Fanny Lu, Martina La Peligrosa, Dragon, Alex Campos, Santiago Cruz, and is now delving into the Japanese market with Dr. R here, cut between Bogota and Tokyo, and is trying to bridge the gap between both cultures. Yeah, sure. Thank awesome. you all for being here. Thanks for having us. So my first question is, how did this all begin? How did you guys connect? How did this all start? Oh, mm -hmm. damn. I guess um, I was trying to make my way um, in the complicated and very different Japanese industry. Yeah. And then I was lucky enough to meet these two amazing human beings who opened their doors for me. They host me in their studios. They invite me to sessions. They teach me a lot of stuff. Um, and I was able to learn from them as great musicians. And one of my biggest dreams has always been to connect the two cultures that I love most, which are my own, the Colombian culture, yeah. the Latin industry, all this sabor that we have in our veins, <laughs> and the Japanese culture, which, which has inspired me a lot. And because um, I think like Japan has kind of adopted me and I feel really good in there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of bring these two amazing cultures together. And it's such a dream to make it happen and have my, my friends over here. Aww. That's crazy. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So how did you yes. first connect? Like, did you just DM them? Or how, how was the first uh, connection, that it first relationship? It was a different story for both. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Kanata, I DM'd her. And yeah. then okay. the day we were about to meet, I almost failed. Because my <laughs> phone died and I, my, my, I had a pocket Wi-Fi. Yeah. And it died too. So I had like 1% and I was running to a Starbucks like to text her like, I am going to the appointment. I'm sorry, I just don't have internet. You're in Tokyo. Right yeah, 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 yeah. So I was... At the end, I found like I had to go to a restaurant and ask like the the staff like I'm sorry, can you please let me borrow your hot? Was was that easy? Like, do they speak English in restaurants in, uh, in Tokyo? Some, sometimes, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I told her like I have an important appointment and she's gonna think I'm not like I just <laughs> didn't show up. So can you let me borrow the hotspot? And then I texted her like I'm sorry, I'm here. Can you please come meet me up? I don't have internet or battery or nothing. And then with Doc, I was working with a friend in common whose name is Yui Mugino, mm -hmm. who's an awesome songwriter. Okay. And then one day she told me like, you got to meet Doc, because he's one of the most important producers in Asia. He's super dope, he's super talented. So come meet him. And then I went to his studio just to say hi, and then we met, and then a couple weeks after we were starting to have sessions. Yes. If I wasn't here with you, it, it will all sound like a fever dream. Like mm -hmm. you're just telling me something that didn't happen. It's crazy, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy that, like you're able to bridge the gap between the two cultures, as you were saying, and you're able to meet these two great musicians and, and producers and composers mm -hmm. and that you have been able to like progress your career towards what you really wanted. Yeah. So between all, all of you, you have like probably more than a billion plays, surely. Mm -hmm. What's your process like? How do you go about uh, producing, composing? How do you go about starting a new project? Do you start a new project before finishing the next one? What's your process like? Who wants to answer first? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, it's so, it's hard. But, uh, I, I usually do uh, so many things. Yeah. In parallel. So, yeah, that that's my style. Okay. Yeah. So I I always uh, make music. Uh, maybe 
15 or 20 songs per month so wow. yeah do you find that the the songs that you're making in parallel bleed into each other like you're making one and it bleeds a little bit into the next one like maybe influences or mm -hmm. sounds yeah but i usually uh finish almost songs in a day wow okay so then uh mixing uh or mastering okay. and recording after day. Do you do the mixing and mastering yourself? Yes, everything. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah, kind of same too. Um, usually I do like 15 or 20 projects in the same time. Mm -hmm. So usually I get a call from the artist or like labels or like management company. And then like check the dates, all the schedules and budgets and all the stuff. If it's go, let's go. And we start it. Um, for me, I usually work like directly with the artist so mm -hmm. it doesn't get like um how to say merged that much yeah so, like for if it's for like this boy band i will like definitely be like more boy band and if it's more like girly stuff i will i'll be more like girly okay. so it's a little bit more like you know acting as a songwriter you know mm -hmm. i will like transform to their style and i'll be like them like that but definitely i'll get more influenced like like these kind of camps like running yeah. camps you know i get so inspired and get new inputs and then go back and because there's so and all, you know yeah. curious about like what's happening here and it's so rare to have like great inputs like about latin music yeah in asia so this is gonna be like a lot of learning i'm I sure i mean this is the first step yeah yes. yes. gotta yes. do this more often yeah yes. yeah, about yeah. You I usually, um, since I started working with the Asian market, I kind of try to block ideas from other types of music coming okay. into different songs. Yeah. Because, like, it's very different sounding type of projects. So if I'm working with them in some type of Asian project, it's definitely going to sound way, like, super, super different than what I'm doing, for example, for a New York artist who wants to make Mexican cumbia. Yeah. So it's completely different. <laughs> so I try, like, not to let, like ideas from another side like bleeding to each other okay i have two follow-up questions the first one how do you go about collaboration like you guys talk a lot about uh, producing with other artists mm -hmm. how do you know if it's gonna like turn out good or if you should maybe just use your time with other artists mm -hmm. how do you go about like choosing your collaborations that's what i mean mm. like um if the bob is good I think okay. it goes good, but also, you know, since we're professionals, yeah. so if it's not going good, we just try hard and also like take time and, you know, communicate a lot, like why it's not going or happening kind of thing. But yeah, usually I think it goes well and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And I know... I know a little bit more about K-pop rather than okay. J-pop and okay. the Japanese market. Yeah. But how do you go about the briefs from the labels? Yeah. Like, do you always write to the brief or do you get like, make songs in the song camps and then just send mm -hmm. whatever is like, fits the brief the most? Yeah. How, how's your process look like? Uh, it's kind of both. So we get briefs and we also write in the writing camps. Mm. Also, uh, sometimes we get like direct calls from the labels, write with the artists or, you know, write like something specific kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's for me. Yeah. yeah. So I, I usually work with our artists directly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I talk with the artist uh, to the direction uh, for the music. So we decided uh, the uh direction uh in the sessions okay yeah <clears throat> yeah i usually like better working with the artist because i feel everything is more genuine and organic yeah. when the artist has a clear mm. idea of where he wants to go rather than where the label wants him to go yeah so for me it's usually uh, more fun to write with the artist and like have his direct feedback and input like on, on real time yeah make him part of the process yeah mm -hmm. okay that's great now I want to talk about the mixing of cultures. Like, mm -hmm. how do you go about mixing these such different cultures, especially you, Alejandro? What did the Latin or Colombian sound have that drew you to to experiment with it, and what did the Japanese sound drew you to experiment with it? I think we have some different um, overall concepts of 
everything. So yeah. like what's dancing in Asia is very different from what's dancing here. So like sometimes the like the more upbeat songs in Asia are kind of more like party style, but over here usually like the slow slow reggaeton okay. is usually okay. the club music. Yeah. So it's kind of very different. Um but I think you can definitely anyways just grasp and learn stuff from every different market and overall I think musicality is like universal yeah. so you can kind of um, take some of the important stuff you learn in different markets and then try to merge them together mm -hmm. Wow, very well said <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, we're all speechless Yes, <laughs> word <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're all three making music all around the world all year long how do you navigate the language barrier and the cultural differences that might stop the flow of a session? Like we were talking about earlier before we started recording that you speak other languages mm -hmm. that work for your sessions. How do you go about um, bridging that language barrier when you don't speak the language? Uh, yeah, that's the, I think that's going to be the tough part for me, like especially for this camp. Yeah. Like one of my specialities is like lyrics. So yeah, it's sadly I still couldn't like, you know, uh, write like Espanol lyrics. Yeah. But um, uh, what I try is like I try to come up like concepts, like titles, or maybe like ideas that can, you know, like connect the, you know, bridge or connect the story kind of thing. And, you know, like, of course, we are really different, but like, like you had, you know, the mentality or maybe like love, you know, stories, drama, some point can be similar, you know. Yeah. So uh, I try to uh, communicate on that point and, but yeah, but that kind of struggle is hard, but on like one point, it's kind of fun too, you know, that kind of like, oh, what are they talking about? And you kind of try to think and also we can communicate by music. That's the beautiful part of songwriting camps. So yeah, if, if I just, you know, sing or try to play and then try to communicate, mm -hmm. yeah, it's all, I think, fun things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, so I, I am a producer, so yeah. uh, good sound is good sound in yeah. anywhere. Mm -hmm. So True. yeah, so I can, I, I just do make great beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my style. Well, yeah, make great beats. That's, that's, that's true. it. Like, yeah. If you play something and then you see people go like, Whoa! <laughs> yeah, the yeah. stank you know, like, Oh, this shit's hard. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. if you don't know the language, yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, this shit goes yeah, hard. Yeah, it goes hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Just a kick. <laughs> <laughs> I think something like kind of important is like the music language in Japanese is a bit different. Mm -hmm. So like some words that are kind of universal in Japan are a bit different. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the tricky part for me because sometimes <laughs> they were go to this section and I had never heard the word. <laughs> in my life, so I was like, what the fuck is that section? What the fuck is that section, you know? Yeah. Um, so it was kind of tricky at first, but I think I've managed. And also most of the people that I work with, they usually speak English. Mm -hmm. So it's way easier. Um, and sometimes when they only speak Japanese, then I try to do my best and then mm -hmm. try to have music kind of connect the like fill those gaps mm -hmm. where language is not enough okay mm -hmm. um as we've said you have a lot of experience you have you've been working for years like 2005 ish 2014 for you um how has your taste and your way of making music and especially your philosophy about like creativity changed during the years wow <laughs> That's a deep question. I think the philosophy is the most important part. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. like, for me, I feel like when you're younger, you're kind of a bit more immature, so you have different goals. So, and I started, I guess, I was, I started as an artist and producer at the same time, so I kind of had the, like, great goal of, like, being super famous and yeah. stuff like that. Then I just kind of stopped chasing it, and I thought, like, that's, I just figured out, like, this is not what's important for me because I, I don't really care. Then I thought, like, then I got to be super rich. Then I thought, like, this is not what I want either, you know? Like, I don't, I don't really want to be super rich. I don't really want to be super famous. I don't care. So I thought at some point, like, I really just want to have the freedom to keep doing what I love and, like, just feel good about it. Of course, you don't want to, like, have the struggles of being super broke. What? Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, I feel like in the end, you just kind of find what's your purpose. And I think mine is to kind of inspire and kind of try different stuff and try to like do stuff that, yeah, like that has never been made, like kind of bonding, like this cultural thing. So 
yeah, my approach at least has changed like drastically over years. How about you guys? Uh, I just want to try to push my sounds everywhere. Okay. Yeah, you know, literally world wise. So. You just want to push yeah. your style and yes. develop your yeah. style farther. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Uh, for me, um, this whole like songwriting is like such a joy for me. Yeah. So uh, my career started as a singer songwriter. So also I was kind of performing a lot in the band as well. But then I realized that I enjoy more like in the studio than gigging. So then one point I realized that like songwriting camps are like awesome because you meet like so many people. Yeah. And then um, you like write immediately, you know, and you know them better than just talking for hours. If you write together, you know the people like better. Gotcha. Yeah. And you travel a lot. And yeah. So luckily I found uh, like a spark in that so after that it was so easy i just focused only to the songwriting and yeah it went really well so yeah like chasing my joy and yeah. meeting great people is just my passion i'm still chasing that forever i think yeah i mean you guys have a gift like writing is is hard and mm. i think writing with people writing is makes people vulnerable mm. and for you as producers and, and songwriters you must be like almost like psychologists to get the <laughs> like the message yeah. out of the the yeah. artist. Yeah. So yeah. it's really great to like get to know your philosophy mm -hmm. towards creating. Mm -hmm. More on that, like right now we're living through a moment where it's hard to catch up with innovation and technology. How do you keep up? Are you like gearheads? Are you always trying to get the latest plug and the latest I don't know the latest gear, or do you just stick with what works? And I think uh, like a really relevant topic right now is AI. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. using it in your process? How do you use it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not using plugins. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so I followed the latest plugins, uh, but for now, uh, I, I don't buy so many plugins okay. for now. Yeah, because uh, any plugins are so, so good for now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we don't need to follow them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try yeah, to oh, oh. like yeah. not fall on the hype too. Like yeah. you can just be buying everything. So uh, if there's something that's really nice and I check it out and it's like, oh, this shit's fire and it's very different from the other stuff, then I'll get it. But otherwise, I focus more on like sounding um consistent and innov innovative, like beyond the plugins, just my sound being like cool and sounding fresh and stuff. Sound like, like you. Yeah, like no matter what plugins you might be using, I don't know the oldest Nexus, <laughs> or you can be using the latest shit, but making it sound fresh, I think that's what's most important. Yeah, so for the producers, maybe, I think the monitor is a Yeah, that's very important. important. Yeah, yeah. The most yeah. Important. monitoring. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, you you guys brought, like, a lot of Kali audio. Oh, yeah. Which we're gonna get to hear. It's yeah, we're gonna really get excited. to hear those in the camp. Yeah, oh, we were yes. so lucky to have them support Kali, this idea. Kaotica, Casio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many brands Crazy. trusted and believed so, on the vision, yeah. so we're yeah. that's great. super thrilled to have them. Yeah, super so, big support. Do you guys subscribe to the idea that, like, um, barriers and, like, using less things can spark creativity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, um, Answering about the AI stuff, yeah, yeah I s actually use, um, not a lot, but I feel like, you know, AI is kind of like a new friend. Yeah. So I use it as a supporter or like a friend when I'm like stuck or, you know, when, of, anyway, I was like researching a lot in internet to get like some ideas or like um, write information kind of thing. Yeah. And it's really supportive, especially when I write like lyrics stuff and also get some like info stuff. So I use it a lot um, and I'm sure it's gonna happen even more and more. But also another side, I don't feel that they're gonna really like take over oh. the real like core part of songwriting yet. So yeah, so I'm using and you know, getting inspired is kind of new way, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy how, yeah. how everyone's using it. I've, I've talked to other K-pop producers mm -hmm. and they've told me like, 
if they're top liners or vocal producers, they yeah. usually use like AI voice mo models oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, to just too. pitch the songs. Yeah, exactly. The singers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even my voice is actually getting uh, to AI right now. So I think it's going to be released somewhere this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. So That's exciting. I can't lose my voice. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then we have like three more questions. Mm -hmm. So this one's like advice ish. So if you had to start all over again, how would you go about doing that? How would you create connections in the industry, work towards achieving wow. the level that you're at right now? And <laughs> wow. <laughs> fo follow up, what advice would you give oh to God. people that are starting out oh. in the industry? Can I reply first? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I think be true to yourself and be nice. Okay. I think a lot of people think to make it, you gotta like fake it till you make it and then play like you're a rock star and like <laughs> then some people, yeah, they just like come to the studio with like, the I'm a superstar kind of energy yeah, yeah, and I think that doesn't work like you just have to be nice and like yeah, yeah. Be respectful to people and be kind and like respect everybody's ideas and opinions and yeah just vibe and just make things passionately I think that's the best advice yeah 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 so my, my mentor said don't be an asshole <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. Dr. R don't be an asshole <laughs> make good beats yeah. yeah that's it that's it yeah simple yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, for me, it's, um, I think, like, trusting yourself mm -hmm. because I didn't trust myself, like, especially in my early days. And I think around me wasn't, like, trusting me as well. So I think it was a bit hard, but um, I never gave up. I never gave up. So that's why I'm here. So trusting yourself and, yeah, just do right move. Yeah, be active. Maybe that's the only thing. Okay. Yeah. What what school of thought are you guys like between volume or quality? Do you think new producers should just like make a lot of songs and mm -hmm. purge the bad ones or just focus on what they think are great ideas? Mm -hmm. Definitely I quality. Think, quality. I think you yeah. should quality. do as much as you can without sacrificing quality. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As yeah. much as you can make without, like, if you're going to sacrifice quality, then just do less. Okay. But if you can do good stuff and do a lot, do as much as you can, as long as it's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, we all aspire to get to your level that you're making songs in, like, an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a great advice for, for aspiring producers. Like, make as much as you can without sacrificing yeah. quality. Yeah. I think it's a great advice. Um, in the realm of social media, how do you think social media and music distribution in platforms like TikTok and short content especially has changed music? Mm -hmm. Do you think about this when you're producing? Like, do you think about the viral TikTok moment or the viral viral dance challenge that you're gonna have with your song? Do you produce towards that? How do you go about social media, navigating the, the new world of, of distribution? Mm -hmm. Um, actually, we get that kind of, you know, sentences all like already in the briefs, like, yeah. you know, think about like getting viral or, you know, like get a like a word that can go viral kind of thing. So, yeah, of course, that's in, but it goes, you never know it goes like viral or not. Yeah. So at least definitely I try to make like really good music. Because it's kind of pointless if it's like bad music and it's viral and you get your name on kind of things. I mean, do you so, think you can make bad music viral? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, maybe I prefer not for me. Uh, of course. Yeah, 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 Definitely. yeah, yeah. So, I, like, you know, you, you never know it goes, it's more like luck, I think, for me. It goes viral or not. Yeah. So, at least I try to make like good music and if it goes viral it goes viral and if it doesn't it doesn't so yeah i don't i care but for my heart maybe i don't care that much okay yeah i think the viralness depends not only on the song yeah. mm -hmm. i think it's like a joint of the music and the artist and the label and the budget and the marketing strategy so it's a lot of things surrounding if a song goes viral or not so I agree, like, we have to try to do good songs because there's a lot of bad songs that are viral and there's a lot of great songs that, that aren't. are not viral. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, uh, the social media is kind of like very TV or radio. Mm. So all we have to do is making great music, right? <laughs> yeah. This okay. Song. Last but not least, what are you most expecting from your visit to Colombia? 
what are you guys like excited about other than the sun camp are you guys visiting other places have you visited other places yes uh, luckily yes i vis uh, i came here like kind of like a week ago mm -hmm. yeah like, so uh, you know i had some sessions already and also visited you know beautiful places already i'm so uh fascinated by the, actually the view of whole this bogoda because you know i love mountains and you know here it's surrounded by mountains mm -hmm. and if you go up a little bit you can see the whole like scenery and it's so like it's so bonito yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so i'm really enjoying that like every day like different view oh my god it's so inspiring feels like you can write like every day every song from that just view so and the food is amazing too. That was surprising. Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because we have us Japanese have really like serious for the food. Yeah, yes, you yeah, have yeah, a yeah. really big like culinary culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, I I'm really enjoying the food as well. Here. It's great. Yes. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. So, I recent recently I am so into uh, watching music. So I'm so happy to uh, be here. And so this is the first time to visit Colombia and Latin America. So this is, I'm super excited. I mean, it's a gateway drug. Yeah. We expect you yeah. here longer and more often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sure I'm gonna yeah, be yeah. back. We should, we yeah, should. yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, we hope to have you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So of thanks course. for coming. Thank you, Alejandro, for putting all of this together. To Master Waves Records, to White Lemon Recording Studios. And thank you for being a part of the Border Sessions interviews. Thank you very much. Thank you so 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 much.